Welcome back to the channel. Another day, more news of comic book shops closing in North America, but we did have one shop open in New Zealand, so I guess that's supposed to be good news for American comic books publishing just the entire industry itself and here to talk to me about what appears to be the impending doom of comic books is Doc. How you doing, Doc? I'm fine. I'm doing much better than the comic book industry is. Well, I think most people are. It's just it's such a bad time right now. I think people are getting flashbacks really to like the 90s when the bubble burst on comic books where it had exploded and become too big for the actual demand for comic books themselves. They were doing everything they could to make their new comic books collectible like the old comic books to meet the demands of people that wanted to invest in comic books. People obviously figured out what was going on. The jig was up and they exited the market and there was a shrinking that was absolutely necessary at the time. It had gotten too big for the actual market itself. Today, we're seeing a shrinking of a market that probably can't afford to shrink anymore, Doc. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the 90s collapse was a more of a market correction. Um, it had expanded, you, you, as you mentioned, so much. A lot of the card stores started getting involved in comics. There was a lot of speculatory money. There's still a lot of speculatory money in comics right now, but speculatory on the new comics back then that 10 years from now, they'd be suddenly worth enough to send your kids to college or, or whatever nonsense people were feeding themselves a, a, in the 90s. Now it's... The, but the other different... Well, actually, hold on. With the, the 90s, though, there was still room for, like, the comic influence to expand and... You know, it, it did a correction, it, it shrunk down, but then it had a chance to expand again into kind of the pop culture and the mass consciousness with through cartoons and video games and TV and T-shirts and movies. Now the problem is it's already done that. So there's nowhere for it to go in order to kind of withdraw, re group itself and then start its growth again because you see this with a lot of industries you know the tech bubble in the in the 2000s it, or in the 90s it grew it grew it grew it popped in the early 2000s it stopped it regrouped it started realizing hey i actually have to have something of value here for the customers and it started growing again and then you ended up with your amazons and your ebays and all that that were there a little bit but didn't become this thing well now comics already did that they let themselves over expand they burst their bubble in the 90s then in the 2000s they started regrouping and finding other ways to get into the mass consciousness and become part of the cultural zeitgeist now comics the comic books part of it is realizing oh shit we have no way to regroup and kind of come back again stronger I disagree with you, Doc. We're actually seeing an expansion of the market just outside of traditional American comic book publishers. Obviously, manga is hotter than can be. We have YA uh, graphic novels that are doing very well. And we're seeing an enormous uh, expansion as far as digital comics outside of America. The Japanese manga creators, the publishers there, they went all in on digital. And now I believe 70% of all Japanese comic sales are digital sales. I believe it's 60 to 65% in Korea. So there's room to expand. And there's actually an appetite, probably a bigger appetite right now for comic book storytelling than ever. Than ever but no one's interested in Marvel, DC, and most traditional American comic book publishers. I think they've decided in order to find this new audience that apparently wants their comic books, they had to change everything. And they're learning that actually people wanted the stories that they already had. They just wanted them in new means of distribution. They want trade paperbacks. They want digital comics. And Marvel and DC have just not caught up with that. They're stuck in their old ways, destroying their characters in their universes while the comic book industry worldwide really passes them by, Doc. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I do agree with that. It's not the issue of like the medium of, of comic and you know, graphic storytelling that doesn't have anywhere to regroup. It does. But I'm talking specifically in the superhero genre of the American comic book industry. It doesn't have really that growth potential anymore because 
instead well, they of missing their opportunity. Well, yeah, they That's did. The problem. There was a moment, like a decade, an entire 10 year period where the most popular brand in the world was Marvel. Everybody knew who the heroes were, the major heroes and even a lot of the B-list heroes and stuff like that. That was their moment to capitalize. That was their moment for real growth and really to capture that audience that they wanted and stabilize the industry and say, we're here for good. And they let it pass them by because they needed to get out the message, Doc. Rather than telling good stories, they needed to replace all the old heroes that people actually knew with new heroes that no one cared about. It's absolutely insane how this happened. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, they definitely missed their opportunity. And instead of taking it, showing everyone the the great options of you know the great way that comic book storytelling can fill holes that that film and and tv can't with giving you a monthly fix of an ongoing narrative with essentially no limitations on cgi fucking special effects um they instead decided to take the opportunity to essentially co-opt their own product to ch to do messaging for it everybody just said this isn't what i wanted i want i want i just wanted to come and read a fucking tony stark comic <laughs> and instead i don't get that i get all these other characters that i don't care about um and so they missed their opportunity but the problem is th they're done there there's no opportunity you know, they would need to really kind of collapse and go back to what they were doing because there's not a way to walk back the problems that they created for themselves over this last 15 years, 10 years, where they did have that opportunity and massively blew it. Um, you know, what's crazy. It's not just like the first and second order effects. That's what we were talking about when I was in the military. What are the effects of the decision that you're making? What are the secondary effects? Who else is it going to affect that you don't intend? But what are the third and fourth order effects that are really going to be the long-term implications of what you're doing? Like when the housing market you know, collapsed, those were third and fourth order effects for decisions made 15 to 20 years prior. And now we're seeing those third and fourth order effects with these closing of all these shops. We have Brainstorm Comics and Gaming closing in Walkerville, Maryland. Multiverse Comics and Games in Culpeper, Virginia closed. Kingdom of Comics in Melbourne, Florida, all closing this week, along with the other shops that we knew were closing. We're seeing artists not getting paid at all right now, not just the little publishers, but the major publishers as well. And we're seeing a lot of smaller publishers starting to declare bankruptcy. We know Valiant is on the brink. IDW is on the brink. All these things are happening. These are the third and fourth order effects of what Marvel and DC did 10 to 15 years ago when they decided to destroy their comic books. Why? I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking, but the chickens have come home to roost, Doc. Oh, absolutely. Um, they, but the thing is, they didn't think about it because they didn't care. They're back Because they're up. too stupid because they're not like, smart. They're not forward thinkers. No, they're not forward Normally thinkers. Normally, it takes a government to destroy something this bad. Uh, yeah, generally speaking, but you can have a whole lot of rank-and-file morons well, yeah, with the cryptocurrency stuff that we just saw right before Christmas, where it turns out a lot of people invested in a moron that was selling basically a, a tchotchke scheme, and they ended up losing all their money because they didn't realize just how dumb that guy was. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, there's so many instances of, and then you end up with the second order effect of, with the crypto of people losing confidence in that other exchanges start going down. Then everybody else's money vanishes and everybody goes, I don't see how this could have happened. All you need is one major idiot in a controlling role and all the dominoes can start falling. Yeah. You're going to see more comic shops close. I think there's a lot of them that did over the last few years, they pivoted into the getting away from new comics. They protected themselves by doing it because Marvel, you know, for all they've Marvel and DC, for all they've screamed about how they want all these new readers and blah, blah, blah. All they've done over the last decade is hitch their wagon more and more and more to a very shrinking niche collectors market people that would go in for the variants for the obscure first appearances they've been shoving more char new characters out that have no substance behind them in the past 10 years than they did all through the most gluttonous period of the 90s um i know i've said it before the worst you know instances the most egregious over 
reaches of variant scheme bullshit in the 90s would have been gen 13 number one with its 13 covers now 13 covers is fucking standard for she hulk number three it's absurd you cannot work on that kind of a of a system you know who it targets the new readers you claim you want never show up and then you start having these second third fourth order of magnitude results of stores closings uh people not getting paid and the industry generally collapsing and instead of actually figuring out that they made a mistake they just decide well i guess superheroes are done and then they try to turn their superheroes to emulate the slice of life ya stuff or the 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 mini series format of other publishers in other industries in other mediums and instead of just realizing that they screwed up the superhero comic market because they're too big of an egotistical douchebag to realize hey we messed up you know the like the the thing that makes me feel bad and i do feel bad for these these uh comic book shop owners but then i don't feel bad you can see the writing on the wall people are buying less new comic books but you believe the comic book shop owners some of them in what Marvel and DC are trying to do. You want to be progressive. You want to see new, younger, more diverse versions of these heroes because that's going to be good for society, but not good to your bottom line. So they've gone in, and a lot of these uh, comic shops have decided to buy into this and lose money in spite of what the market is telling them in the hopes that supporting DC and Marvel and being a good partner, I guess, in this business will eventually work out one day, and they're all going out of business. The comic shops that are working right now are comic shops that are going haul in on collectibles, making their own collectibles, ones that have pivoted over to being geek culture kind of shops, you know, tabletop gaming, uh, tchotchke shirts, stuff like that, with comics in the corner, you know, because they still want to be a comic book shop, but they don't really, but that's not their main product anymore. Stuff like that. People that are going into back issues, being specialized in the back issue market, stuff like that, are working comic book shops that have had faith in marvel and dc to figure this out this new direction that they're going for the last 10 years has not worked and they're all going to go under doc and dc and marvel are never going to apologize they're never even going to feel bad for fucking these people over and probably destroying their life savings no they don't and they never will because as far as they're concerned, the the stores aren't even the customer the only people that's the customer is their distributor so that's the only thing that they care about. They don't bother to think more than one, you know, one step down the line. And they're all short-term thinkers. They're just going to be confused. But you know what? I, I really don't feel bad for, well, I feel bad for some of the store owners. I feel bad that they're this gullible. They um, want to be good partners. Yes. They want to support what Marvel or, and DC are doing. They want to be a part of the industry. They don't realize they're the collateral damage. Well, I'm don't. not. You're not. We realize what's going on here. Yes, absolutely. We we you know we're they they feel they want to be on board with what Marvel and DC are doing. They want to be good partners and allies and blah blah blah. All they are, are useful idiots that that bought into media coverage, telling them things that just isn't true about how successful and how popular and how great these these new characters are and how they're bringing in all these new readers they're not they're just not talking about the fact that hey we got 50 new readers here yes we lost 480 but we got 50 new ones they're not they just ignore the bad news only listen to the good news through the media and then wonder why reality doesn't reflect it it's because they're being lied to and they're useful idiots well and we're seeing the same thing outside of comic books now the mcu pretty much feels like it's a dead brand at this point. Sure, it's making a little bit of money here and there, but it's a fraction of what it was doing before because they've also bought into what Marvel Comics were doing 10 years ago and decided to change out all the regular heroes that people like with the new crappy versions that never worked for Marvel Comics, and it's destroying a billion-dollar movie franchise as well. When are these guys going to realize reality has slapped you in the face and told you none of this is ever going to work anywhere? Um, when they're all out of business, that's when it works because look, they, <clears throat> these people have lied to themselves and to each other for so long that they actually started believing it. And then they 
justify their decision making based on the lie that they told themselves so they wouldn't get in trouble from their bosses in the first place for making a mistake. All these people have to do is look in a goddamn mirror and the problems could be solved overnight, but they refuse to accept it. Their egos are too fragile and too tiny and they believe too much in what they're doing to ever admit I was wrong. And every single one of those stores that go out of business, some of them I feel very bad for. Maybe they didn't go all in on the, uh, the crazy agenda nonsense maybe they were just trying to work it like you know and listen to what the actual market was telling them the problem is the 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 publishers have shrunk the actual target market so much based on all their poor decisions over the last 10 years that even properly run businesses are going to start failing too i think a lot of people think about the 90s collapse in comic books and think it can never be worse i'm telling you right now it is worse right now. We are seeing the very beginnings of this. We've been leading up to it for about five years now. It's finally here. And Doc, you lived through the 90s. This is going to be worse. God, yes. It's going to be so much worse because there was still a little bit of a newsstand market left over. There was still a lot of... Um, back issue content that a few years later people started looking back at and going you know what i do kind of want that nobody's going to come back and say hey you know what i really really want that uh bitch planet that's what yeah. i need <laughs> yeah exactly I, I really want some some of those you know issues basically two through whatever of riri ironheart um they're not going to come back and want that stuff this time it's it's going to turn into you know junky shit comics that you find in uh at the bottom of the quarter bin that have been still sitting there you know old new universe comics from the 80s that are sitting in a quarter bin somewhere that the dollar bin doesn't even want anymore that's where you're going to be at and you can't really make money on that. You can't grow and you can't be a viable industry working like that. It just doesn't happen. Earlier, I mentioned the numbers throughout comic books in North America are actually pretty good. It's just Marvel and DC. They're absolutely terrible. They have not come up with the times. If you need the proof, these are the scariest numbers I've ever seen regarding Marvel and DC comics. When you see them in comparison to their peers on the market, you'll realize they aren't peers anymore. They are an afterthought, a niche product compared to what regular comic books are selling these days. Definitely check this out if you don't see it here. There's a link in the video description.